Hello everybody, I am back with an update for you. As you can see, the plants are looking pretty good. I did change out my light. I switched to this uh, Mars Hydro. I don't know if you can see it because uh, the lighting is so harsh in here. But I switched to a Mars Hydro. It's a TS600. Um, it's one of the, the daylight kind of lights where it's very looks more like just natural light versus the red-blue. Uh, the reason I switched for this light is because it has a much wider, it's a 600 watt, uh, but it has a much wider field that it casts down to. Um, I think it's rated at, because it's, it's larger, as you can see, the actual size of the light itself is larger uh, than another 600 watt that I have over here. Uh, as you can see, these right here, this is a 600 watt right here, and you can see how small it is. Uh, in comparison to that other one. Uh, the reason I switched to this one is, well, I wanted to give it a try, and I like the the daylight light better, uh, but this also has a wider coverage. So they rate this as a, um, at 18 inches, I believe it's supposed to cover something like close to four, a four by four square. Uh, so that's the light I wanted to use, so I wouldn't have to run two lights in here, I could run one light, and I can cover all my plants with it. And as you can see, uh, once they got past uh, the initial harshness of the light, the brightness, um, they've actually done quite well. Um, the one that is not doing quite well is this one right here. Um, it's doing okay. It's got some tip burn here, which is mainly probably either a nutrient thing, I suspect, because uh, this is the one that is in uh, a plastic pot and so it does not dry out very well. Um, and that's one of the things that really annoys me about plastic pots is they just don't dry out. Um, and they're not very consistent with their drying out. Um, one thing that I do occasionally do with it is you can take, like, uh, I always use one of these. Um, switch out of there. Uh, it's one of those water probes. Of course, the thing doesn't like it. There it goes. It's one of the moisture meters. Um, and what I do, as you can see right now, it's going to be really wet because I just watered everything. Uh, but what you can do is you can take and you can just stick it in the soil and wiggle it back and forth and then draw it out. And it'll leave a, a gap in the soil. Uh, now, unfortunately, with the cocoa core that I'm using, you can do that while it's wet. But as it dries, it tends to fall back into place. Uh, but it does help it dry out. Um, the fabric pots are doing well. I did for some reason was either, um, I don't know, not paying attention to what I was doing. I thought the wrong, I, I had different plants for different things. I'm not sure. Uh, but as you can see, these two on this side over here, these are not auto flowers. These are photo period plants. Um, and I unfortunately stuck one of them in a two gallon pot um, because at the time I thought it was an auto flower. But it turns out it's not. The auto flowers over here, one's this plastic pot and the other one's back there. I did top this plant because I always wanted to see on an auto flower, if you top it, what actually happens. Um, depending on where you're reading, some people say no, don't. Other people say eh, it's not going to really bother them. Uh, just don't do it too, too often. Um, so I did it just the one time just to see what it would, what it would actually do on its own. Um, and it's doing all right. I broke this leaf apparently watering it. Um, this one back here has not been topped at all, and it's an auto flower. You can see it's got the little hairs on it. Um, if you look underneath it here, let's see if we can get up under there. Uh, you can see it's it's growing the little hairs and stuff, and this one here as well. If you can get up underneath here, you can see them really coming up on there quite a bit. Uh, now these two plants back here I have topped twice so far. Uh, I topped them initially in here at about the third or fourth node I think it was and then again when it hit a third node. Um, the one especially in the back has been taking to it quite well. Um, it does have one leaf right here that looks pretty bad but I believe it's just wind damage because this one leaf was on top of it. The fans blown on it and it's just causing the whole it to shake and just kind of rub it um, not really being a problem uh, you can see there is a top right in there that i did plus there's a top up in here um, 
they're doing pretty well. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to switch them to 12 hours and kick them into um, flower. Probably sometime in August, maybe when the autos are done and I start a second cycle of them, I will switch everything over to 12 hours. The auto flowers don't care and they'll do either way. doesn't make a difference to them. Uh, one thing I did want to update on here was I have been using this uh, Maxi Grow, and it has been working pretty well for me. I find that it's uh, it's doing pretty well. I've also been using uh, General Hydroponics Cal Mag, uh, which you basically have to use all the time. Um, I do pH my water every single time I go to water them because I am using Cocoa Core. Uh, soil does or can provide a little buffering on that but I prefer to go ahead and hit them uh, just to check them with the pH, just to make sure that it's not crazy low because when you start adding in a lot of these nutrients, they really, they really take down the pH level. Um, the lowest I've read so far is about a 4.6 or so, and it really needs to be around six and a half. Uh, I've been using the Florilicious Plus here, which has been working pretty well. Um, I only use, I have the Armor Psy, which is a silica supplement. Um, I only use it very little, uh, once every, about once a month or so. I don't use it often at all. Uh, it's mainly just to help the, the plants become stronger and to provide them a little insect protection. Uh, to adjust my pH, to bring my pH up, which is all I've ever actually had to do, is I use potassium bicarbonate. Uh, I got this off of Amazon. It's USP. It's a pharmaceutical and food grade. Um, per gallon, usually a quarter teaspoon will raise it about half a point or so. Um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's start light, see what the adjustment, what it makes, and then, you know, you can change from there. Uh, that's the best way to handle these things. You don't want to just pour a whole bunch in unless you know that whole bunch is what you need. You want to start with a little bit, see what adjustment it makes to it, and then go from there. Uh, you can add and subtract at that point. Uh, but you don't want to go hog wild right off the bat because then, you know, you may end up having to try and find you some pH down to balance back out, and you end up doing a whole game of up and down on your pH, and it's painful for the most part. Uh, I have been using this Myco Plus again. Uh, I am not happy with this stuff. It's It doesn't dissolve well in water. Uh, as you remember, I did get this Dino Myco. Um, it doesn't dissolve in water at all. It's supposed to be a, a soil supplement, and there is some in the soil. Um, but the Myco, Myco Plus is supposed to be a supplement that dissolves. It's very poor at the dissolving and always leaves a residue in the pitcher of water or in the, the mixture, in the, in the nutrient mix. Um, that's why I don't like it because I feel like, you know, if it's not all mixing in and I'm leaving a residue, then not all of it's going into the plants, right? So that's a problem. At least as far as I'm concerned, it's a problem. I got my trusty pH meter. Um, got a little mixture thingy here that I got at Walmart for, it's a uh, children's medicine. But it has right on it milliliters and teaspoons because you know a lot of these a lot of these fertilizers are either they give you one or the other they never give you both it seems like when it comes to mixtures i also have a really big one here uh, with a tube on it for um, when i was doing my plants outside last year in the big pots it takes all you know five gallons of water it takes a whole lot of nutrients uh, and that's how we're done the plants are looking good Lice nice and green, getting tall, getting bushy. Uh, haven't moved the light recently. I did move it initially and then lowered it back down just so the plants can get a handle on it. It did burn them a little bit. As you can see, that one down there is still having a little, a little something going on. And I think it is just a light burn on that plant, to tell you the truth, because uh, it's only on the very tips and it's not moving around on the plant and the new leaves look pretty well so eh, you know a little light burning gonna hurt nobody there's a little bit on the plant in the back too but it's only on a like one leaf it looks like so maybe two so I'm not gonna worry about it I'm not going to adjust I do have a tape measure here just in case 
I need to raise it up a little bit, but right now it's doing all right. Uh, one thing I will mention is I have a thermometer down here. Uh, my basement this time of year runs right about 70 degrees, so I haven't really had to supplement it. Uh, but it is a rather humid down here. Uh, the higher the humidity goes, people are like, oh, the plants really love 70% humidity. My experience has been the opposite of that. When you get up in, in that high of humidity, it's, uh, the soil never seems to dry out correctly. Um, and if it doesn't dry out, you can end up with root rot. You can end up with stem die off. Um, it can be problematic. So I usually run or have a dehumidifier down here uh, running from time to time to keep it at about 45 to 50 percent. Um, that seems to be about a good number for it because then the soil will dry out because the humidity will, you know, the, the soil will evaporate the water off. And then you know, it doesn't collect down here and the plants uh, get more of a chance to dry out and then get some nutrients um, instead of just sitting there and soaking in water all day long and, and getting some root rot, which you don't want. Um, so you really just need to know your environment, what you got going on, um, and then keep it under control. I mean, that's the, the biggest thing is keeping, keeping the environment under control. You can see I do have these under... Um, Boot trays. Uh, I just got locally at, I don't know, Walmart or someplace, uh, Lowe's maybe. They're just boot trays for the winter time. Um, I put the plants on them because then it lets the water run out and it collects in the tray and I can either sop it up, uh, take the plants out, set them to the side, take the tray out and dump it. Or in a lot of cases, what will happen is the plant or the, the pot itself will soak it back up because it is fabric. And so it works pretty well. Um, there was a nice little puddle right there. It's not a puddle anymore. So some of it has either evaporated or been soaked up, one or the other. Take your chance. Take your pick. Uh, if I do need some extra little bit of heat, I did actually put this light in here. It's got an incandescent bulb in it, uh, an old style bulb. Um, that has been enough to provide any sort of little additional heat because this light here does get somewhat warm. Um, not super hot, but it gets warm enough to, to heat it up. Uh, when they start to get too smelly, though, I'll end up having to turn the big fan on up top to draw air out of here to filter it, to get rid of the smell. Um, and then I'll just have to watch the temperature. As long as it's sitting around 70, I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, as you can see, this tent does have vents down here on the bottom. Right now, since it's in my basement, I've just been leaving the door open. Hasn't really been bothering them. Um, I don't really have too much fear for them going, um, turning mail on me. I know some people worry about that, but I don't really worry about it too much. Just keep an eye on them, see what they're doing, go from there. My main concern is bugs. Um, that's what you really want to watch out for, bugs. Spider mites, mealy bugs, all that sort of stuff. Keep an eye out for those, and you'll probably come out with a good harvest. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'll give you an update uh, at a later date.